The purpose of this video is to review over the anatomical structures of the fetal pig. Now, the fetal pig is typically used as a comparison to the human. However, there are noted differences that will be discussed as we continue through this video. Since this video is set up to prepare you for a comprehensive lab practical over human anatomy and physiology, we will divide the information into two shorter video segments. One on the gross anatomical structures of the fetal pig, the second on the circulatory system of the fetal pig. A quick review over the directional terms includes that this area right here is known as the anterior surface. This area here is the posterior. The back is known as the dorsal, and the belly side is known as the ventral. When you first get your pig, um, what you want to do is position your pig on its side in a dissecting pan so that you may observe the external features of the pig. The body of the pig is divided into the head area and the trunk, and the trunk region is further divided into the thorax area, which will house the lungs and the heart and the abdominal region which will house all of the larger uh, organs such as the stomach, the intestines, the gallbladder, the liver, etc. Separating the thorax from the abdomen is the muscular diaphragm. Once you have done this you can turn your pig over on its dorsal surface so that you may view the structures on its ventral surface. As you're doing this, just a few quick notes. First of all, these fetuses come from mature female uh, pigs that when they were slaughtered for their meat were discovered to have unborn young. And so these unborn young were then uh, preserved and uh, sent for uh, dissection purposes. Therefore, all of these specimens that we're working with were not uh, unnecessarily killed for scientific purposes. The gestational period of uh, the fetal pig is typically about 114 days or 16 weeks, which is much shorter than the gestational period of the human body. Uh, the pigs that you're dissecting will probably be between 100 and 114 days, which is usually about 8 to 12 inches long. Uh, this allows for fully developed organs and organ systems for us to examine. Now that you have placed your pig on its dorsal side or its back side, you are able to view the structures on the ventral surface or the belly side. You will be able to identify the umbilical cord that protrudes from the uh, ventral side of the abdomen. You will also see the uh, mammillary papilla around the abdominal region near the umbilical cord. Both sexes have these. But in the female, these will develop into the mammillary glands and will be used to produce milk for the, the uh, young offspring. The first incision that you will make uh, as you begin to dissect your fetal pig is going to be starting right up here just under the chin. You will be making in, an incision going down. You want to cut around the umbilical cord and continue down. You want to go around the umbilical cord because just underneath we have the liver that will have the umbilical vein running to the umbilical cord and you want to leave this intact until you're able to identify this structure. You will also need to place a cut here and here and remember that the fetal pig still has cartilage for its skeletal system and you'll be able to cut that uh, nicely and open up your pig. After you have made that initial incision down the uh, length of the uh, fetal pig's body and you've uh, cut and uh, opened up the uh, areas around the uh, four legs then you'll make these little slits right there and you'll open up those as flaps and we've got the internal structures of the fetal pig exposed. Now we will begin with the anterior surface and we'll work our way down and beginning we have the larynx located right in this area. Now the larynx is that enlarged oval shaped protrusion that we see right here that is anterior on that cranial end of the trachea. 
It allows uh, for mammals to have a vast uh, array of vocal ranges. In humans, this is where the vocal cords would be, but in the fetal pig, it would allow for the grunts and any high-pitched noises that it makes. As it thins out, we can see the uh, trachea right here. Now that trachea, you can see the cartilage rings, and it is C-shaped, so that we can see that this is wide open. Directly behind the trachea, right there, we have the esophagus. Now remember, the esophagus is a collapsed tube. It only opens when one swallows food, and that food will, uh, as it passes down the esophagus, press into the trachea and close the trachea off. So we've had the larynx and the trachea, and we see the esophagus. On either side of the um, trachea, we can see a gland, and this gland, it continues down on top of the heart, and that's the thymus gland. It is much larger in a, a fetal organism than in an adult, and it functions in helping with the immune system. In humans, by the age of uh, 35, this is completely dissolved. Now, if we take this right here, and we separate that out when we first opened our, our uh, fetal pig, we're going to see this round gland right here, and it will typically look kind of a reddish color. This very uh, prominent gland is the uh, thyroid gland. Moving down, we can see our heart. Remember that our fetal pig, like a human, has a four-chambered heart, so it has two atria and two ventricles. Right here we can see one of the atria. Now on the outside of the heart it's called auricles and on the inside it's called the atria. As you're working with your fetal pig, do remember that you're working with the pig's right and left and not your own. So this side over here would be the right side of the pig. This side over here would be the left side of the pig. So we are looking right here at the left auricle. We would have the left ventricle and the right ventricle, and we can see a coronary blood vessel running right down here. On either side of the heart, we can see our lungs, and our lungs and our heart both make up part of the thoracic cavity. The sac that surrounds the heart, and we can see it right in this area, is called the pericardial sac. The thin tissue that covers over the lungs is known as the pleural membrane. Separating our thoracic cavity from our abdominal cavity is the diaphragm. Now this muscular sheath is unique to mammals. And this allows for this thoracic cavity to expand and contract, allowing oxygen to move into the lungs and out of the lungs. <clears throat> Continuing down, we can see the largest organ of the body, which is the liver. Directly under the liver, we have the gallbladder. It typically shows up as a little green sac. <clears throat> On the left side, we can see right here the stomach. It just happens to be empty. Right next to the stomach, we see the spleen. Continuing down, the grainy gland just underneath the stomach is the pancreas. Now, the pancreas also has islets of Langerhorn, just like we saw on our, our human slides earlier this year. And moving from our stomach, we will move into the intestines. We will get a better view of the intestines in a moment. But our small intestines do have the three regions, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. We still have the same valves, so we will have our uh, cardiac valve going from our esophagus to our stomach. We will have the pyloric valve going from the stomach to the small intestines. Moving from the small intestines to the spiral intestines, or large intestines, we would have that ileocecal valve. Continuing, we can see uh, part of the uh, rectum moving down this way. He, this structure here and this structure right here are both umbilical arteries. We'll see a closer view in a moment. Running in between them, we have the urinary bladder. 
right here was the structure when we had you do that first incision we told you to be careful and this right here is that umbilical vein and it runs from the liver right on down to that umbilical cord now in this view of the fetal pig just to get you oriented right here is the heart so uh, the head would be further out of view so we have the heart right here on either side of the heart we have our lungs here we have that muscular diaphragm that has been cut from the abdominal wall and so looking below the diaphragm we would then be able to see the um, part of the liver and here we have our stomach now with the stomach right next to it we have that spleen that we saw in the previous slide we can also see the small intestines we can see part of the colon now we have taken our organs and we have moved all these organs this way and we've done that so that you can see the kidneys now the kidneys are behind the abdominal cavity and the tissue that covers the organs in the abdominal cavity is called the peritoneum and you have to tear through that peritoneal tissue in order to see the kidneys so the kidneys are described as being retroperitoneal or behind the peritoneal cavity and so here we have the kidney and we have the arteries and veins that are entering the kidney remember that red are arteries and blue are veins and in our uh, fetal pig what they've done is taken liquid rubber and injected that into the arteries and veins and they use a blue color for the veins and a red for the arteries so we can see our renal arteries and veins and then we can see the aorta and we can see the inferior vena cava and then running from the kidneys down way down past to the bladder we can see the ureter and that runs right along in this area so here we have another view of the abdominal cavity and just to get oriented again here we have the heart we have that uh, pericardial sac around the heart we have the bottom section of the lungs that we can see uh, running across this area we would have the diaphragm uh, here we're seeing our liver with the gallbladder uh, we can see the stomach again now this is nice because the stomach has been raised and you can see that white grainy gland that's the pancreas over here we can see the small intestines remember the first part of the small intestines when we go from the stomach to the small intestines is the duodenum and so we can see that right here additionally when we look at our large intestines uh, that is also known as the uh, spiral colon on the fetal pig and so again we can see the spleen we can see part of the liver we can see that stomach right across here we can see the pancreas and we can see that large intestines or that spiral colon now if we take the small intestines and we spread these apart what you will see is a see-through tissue with a bunch of red lines and those red lines are all the little uh, blood vessels that are running to the uh, small intestines that see-through tissue is mesentery it helps to hold the organs in place and within that mesentery you will see a bunch of tiny knots or bumps and those tiny knots or bumps that are located within the mesentery within the uh, small intestines are known as the lymph nodes as we review over uh, the anatomy of the uh, male versus the female on the fetal pig we have our intestines located right up here and so if we keep moving up the head would be located this direction way up further but what uh, I tell my students to do is if they will take their urinary bladder and it has the umbilical arteries on either side and if they will pull it down in this direction if you see a tube running across right here that's an indication that you have a male this is the vas deferent or the ductus deferent now if you have a fetal pig that is uh, much younger than a hundred days sometimes the testes will not descend and you will open up your fetal pig and uh, think that you have a female and as you start looking you then begin to wonder do you have a hermaphroditic pig 
And no, you have not. You just have a pig that's very early in its development. The testes have not descended. And when you have very young pigs, the easy way to tell male from female is to pull this bladder down and to look for this vas deferens. On a uh, male pig that has matured and is closer to 100 to 114 days, the male organs have descended properly, and you'll be able to dissect out from the scrotum and find the testes. Sitting on top of the testes will be the epididymis. Moving right along over, you'll find the uh, penis located in this area here. Now, do you know uh, that its location compared to the bladder? Uh, we have the spermatocord located here, and then we have the urethra. Now, what I'm asking you to notice for um, your lab practical is going to be the testes, the epididymis, and the ductus deferens from the previous slide. However, you can also see the bubble urethral gland located here that we identified on our male structures in lab. And the best location for seeing that epididymis uh, when you're actually dissecting your uh, fetal pig is really going to be in this area right here. It'll be a little bit uh, thinner type tissue and you'll see a difference from this solid testy structure to this epididymis area that's more of a tube storage area for the developing sperm. Moving to a female pig, again, in this direction, much further would be the head. So we're looking at the intestines. The hind legs would be down in this direction. We have the umbilical arteries, and we have the bladder. Now, again, we're going to pull those down, and we'll see these bean-shaped structures, which are the ovaries. The little spiral tubes are the fallopian tubes. Now, right where those fallopian tubes meet is where we have the uterus. And so these are the structures you need to be aware of for the female. 